In 1937, James Mark Prime listed 57 reasons for using the rubber dam. Now there are even more reasons than those. Now these are the two favorite clamps, the wingless 8A on the right and the wingless double aught on the left. So you have to have at least three or four of the B1s available on your tray so that you can use them as rubber dam retainers and as tissue retractors. If you notice on this upper molar tooth, the palatal root is a little smaller. And here is another example of uh, the B4s back to back. And notice they're all stabilized with compound. First, you must put moldable compound on the teeth, stick it real well. And when you put pressure here, you chill the compound and that holds the clamp in proper position. And here you can see it's seated and you've got plenty of access to take an impression if it's you're doing a porcelain inlay or, or a gold foil. Here is our tray set up. All of our clamps are individually packaged and sterilized. Now here we have lingual or palatal decay of an upper molar. We have half of the 212 that's embedded in the compound and it gives us beautiful access. Then the dam is applied to the teeth and the floss is threaded underneath the fixed component and the flap is pulled through underneath. And the, the second premolar is a pontic and the rubber dam has been applied underneath that pontic and you have excellent access to restore either tooth. The easier way to go and better way to go is simply by putting rubber dam on or a proper tissue retractor that will go to the, the depth of the sulcus and you can see the calculus and if you can see it, you can remove it. You can replane your teeth perfectly smooth as we've done here with our B4s back to back, stabilized with a compound like I've shown you earlier. And now we have the access to the calculus that we need. And it's no problem to clean it off and get your, uh, your teeth glass smooth, which is what I call 